Thank you for joining our broadcast today at City Life Church. We would love to hear how God is using this ministry in your life. Please take a minute to send us your story at info at citylifechurch.cc. And if God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially to help us bring God's word to other people. You can go to our website at citylifechurch.cc to find the giving options that works best for you. Now in today's message, Pastor Tony will be delivering an encouraging word that we know is going to touch your life. We pray that you listen with expectation, believing that everything you need from God, he's going to do it. Enjoy today's message. When you leave today, or maybe you picked one up when you came in, there's some kiosks. And we have prepared these prayer guides for our 2020 prayer focus. And this is what we're asking. That over the next 20 days, starting tomorrow, starting tomorrow, that you would commit 20 minutes of prayer for 20 days. And in our 2020 prayer focus, we're believing that this 20 minutes, for some it's going to be a gateway and you're going to pray 30, 45 minutes, maybe even an hour. But for some starting out, we're not asking you for a, an hour or half the day, 20 minutes. And even if you need to make it easy, 10 in the morning, 10 in the night. But for some of you, you're going to think 20 minutes isn't that long and you're going to get down in two minutes in. You're going to think of everything you need to do at the house. I need to clean the garage. I need to, you know, whatever it is. I didn't run by the mall. But we're going to ask you to start and take this measure of faith and stretch it. We've created a handbook of prayer. And in the back, there's prayer place, a uh, place where to write your petitions and what you're believing God for. If you're watching online and you are not regularly here in the house, you can uh, jump on the app. We have it there. We've created music for you to put on during your prayer time. Matter of fact, 20 minutes of worship and downloadable music. So you just put it on and when it done, you know your time is up. And if you want to go, you just keep praying. Start it again. But we're making it easy for you for us to walk in a place of intentional prayer. And we're believing that what you start over this next 20 days is going to become a habit in your life. And I'm believing if you will form, we will form the right habits, it will lead us to great places of victory. You say, well, pastor, why do we start with 20 minutes and not an hour and not two hours? Because I'm a pastor. And like a father, I know you have to start your children somewhere. And there are intercessors in this room. And it's nothing for you to pray for hours. But we're looking at a body of believers, some new believers. We baptized 61 people on Wednesday night. No, I don't think you heard me. We baptized 61 people on Wednesday night. You know, there are churches that don't baptize that many people in a year and God has given us to harvest of people and hundreds and hundreds of people every year are baptized and we have new believers and we want to walk together in this journey so you start with me and our staff and our leadership tomorrow and we're going to walk in this journey of prayer and I'm believing that God is going to speak we are going to hear heaven and we're going to see things shift here on earth amen let's go to the word today if you have your Bibles Ephesians chapter 6 then we're going to jump to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and then we'll go to our foundational scripture for today, which will be Matthew chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I want to speak to you for the next few weeks in our series, pray like this. Pray like this. Ephesians chapter 6. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, Against the rulers of the darkness of this age. Somebody say this age. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God. For the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down arguments. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Ephesians says, We do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, things that exalt themselves, rulers of this age. From the beginning of time, there's been a battle of light and darkness. From the very first chapters of your Bible, you read a fight that took place, a spiritual battle in a garden. And from that moment on, there's always been a journey 
of man trying to battle and keep ground and take dominion. And the Bible tells us that we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Your neighbor in your cul-de-sac is not your enemy. You say, well, pastor, they keep leaving stuff out in the yard. And you know, I ran over their kid's bike. They're not their enemy. Your spouse is not your enemy. Your boss is not your enemy. Those people that have wounded you really are not your enemy. Those people that have hurt you. Republicans, Democrats are not your enemy. Democrats, Republicans are not your enemy. It's not a white battle or a black battle or a it's it's not we're not wrestling against the things that we seem to fight against. But the Bible says as Christians we are in a fight of faith and we are walking as people of faith in an earth realm that is in a war. And if you determine to fight the good fight of faith, you're going to have to fight it with the good news of the Word of God. And the good news is this. All you need has been given to you and I to win. And the Bible said Jesus began to walk the earth. And his very arrival, there was a battle. Hell began to ratchet up. And the forces of darkness began to invade the earth like never before. At his very birth, a wicked king began to kill babies trying to destroy the Messiah. Messiah. From the very first steps he took into a synagogue, religious people began to rile and attack him. Everywhere he went, there was a pushback of the forces of darkness. Matter of fact, Jesus even said it, John 10, verse 10, he said, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. There's a battle going on. But the good news is I've arrived, and I not only have life, I have it in abundance. And I want you to realize there is a battle. There are principalities. There are spiritual realms, and there are hosts in in the present day. And there's an assignment even over Tampa Bay that would war against the body of Christ and the light of the kingdom. But he said, the good news is you're a mighty weapon in God to the pulling down of strongholds. You have been given an anointing to walk the earth as an ambassador of the kingdom in anywhere you are, I am. And if you understand that the power in you and the God in you has the ability to come against those false things that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. What is it that the enemy does that battles the knowledge of God? It's when the enemy convinces you that you are not what God said about you because that's what happened with Jesus. We heard last week and we've talked last month that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Matter of fact, somebody's faith is being built right now because you're hearing the word of God. But faith moves to another level after the heard word is now the spoken word because Jesus heard the word at the water when the father said this is my son that's my boy in him I am well pleased but faith went to a whole nother level when he walked in the wilderness and every time the enemy came around he said get behind me it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that flows out of the mouth of God I'm praying in the next 21 days somebody's faith goes to another level because you've not just heard the word but now you're rising up with a declaration anybody ready to speak over your life over your faith family, over your assignment, over your house. Come on, right now, open your mouth and tell him he's a good God. A mighty weapon. Nudge your neighbor say, you're a mighty weapon. That's awesome. Here it is, in God. That, that's, that's the kicker right there, in God. Because we cannot fight a supernatural battle in the natural realm. But God wants to invade your natural world with his supernatural power. I told the early service, maybe you're here and you're a new believer. We have a lot of new believers. And he said, Pastor, supernatural, that word sounds spooky to me. That's, a, that's weird sounding, you know. It, it's really simple. It's just this. God's super getting on your natural. The authority of God's kingdom invading your natural world. And I'm believing over this next few weeks, some of us are going to experience a new realm because we're going to take prayer serious. Prayer is more than a few words as you eat, a few words as you lay your head down. But it is your connection to the heavens. And if you pray serious and you pray intentional, knowing that there is a real battle, and prayer is not an obligation, it's an opportunity. I'm going to say that again. It's not an obligation, but it's an opportunity to know God in a greater way. To know who he is. And 
the ministry of Jesus was so dynamic that his disciples marveled. And they saw him moving and combating the forces of darkness. And everywhere he went, he pushed back darkness because that's what the work of grace does. It pushes back darkness. And everywhere he went, he left his imprints and eternity left its mark. And he would say things like this over and over. He would say things to his disciples, what I'm saying to you is what I've heard the Father say to me. What I'm declaring to you is just what I've already heard. What I'm doing is just what the Father told me to do. And over and over he said these things. So finally one day while he was praying, the disciples slid in. Because now they have a revelation that when you hear from God and you do what the Father says do, there's supernatural results. So they asked, they said, will you teach us to pray? And at that moment, these 12 men that were being equipped to change the world, Jesus began to teach them and lay out a pattern for them. And in Matthew chapter 6, as they snuggled up to Jesus in this prayer time, verse 5, he says, when you pray. Somebody say when. when. Not if, when. Not an option, but when. And then in verse 9, he says, in this manner, therefore pray. Or pray like this. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. That is a beautiful prayer, and I love the words of this prayer in the gospel. But I believe Jesus was not so much giving them a group of words to recite. Now, when you pray the Lord's Prayer intact, it's, it's beautiful and it has power. But I believe he was giving them a formula for their prayer life. He said, in this manner, pray like this. He said, first realize prayer is personal. You're not praying to some light force out there. You're not praying to some, some power that cannot be touched, but you're praying to your heavenly Father. And he said, pray like this, our Father which are in heaven. And when you understand and you begin to connect to God's personhood, our Father in heaven, and you realize that it's his delight to bless his children. Friend, if you've ever been taught to pray to any other God or you ever heard that you could pray to any God out there and the same God heard all of these prayers, it's not the truth. The Bible said there is one way and it's through our Father. And when you pray to him, heaven's attention is directed to you. And when you begin to connect to him in a personal level your prayer is moving past mere words to a personal connection he said our father who is in heaven hallowed be thy name he said when you come in I want you not only to connect to him personally but I want you to seek the presence of God I want you to invite the presence of God when you begin to seek him in this manner what you're saying is you're not only my father but you are holy you lack nothing all I need is in you everything you have is what I need every declaration you have spoken is life and when I begin to understand who he is I begin to seek God's presence hallowed be your name what I'm saying is you are holy now the holiness of God is, is more than an outward appearance sometimes as a church we get it all out of balance we think that if you look a certain way you're holy but friend I've met people that looked holy that did not live holy but when you have a holiness in you and you have a reverence for God and you know who he is you can walk into his presence with a confidence and when his presence invades your world everything changes he said when you come into your father's midst invite his presence into your life he said but do not stop there he said pray that a kingdom agenda pray that you will begin to align with God's priorities after you connect personally to this God and you invite his presence in your life align with God's priorities. He said, pray like this, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You may not know this, but everything 
everything you need is in your heavenly bank account. Everything that has been assigned to you has already been declared. Everything you need has already been put in place. The purpose, the assignment, maybe you don't realize that you're here on purpose for purpose. There's a reason you're on planet Earth. There's a reason you're taking up space right now. There's a reason you're in Tampa, Florida, even if you do not want to be in Tampa, Florida. Friend, I've got good news. There's a purpose marked on your life, and it may not be manifest yet, but when you begin to pray heaven's kingdom, priority come, something begins to happen. When I get up in the morning and I realize I'm assigned to something today, that's where I can declare this is the day that the Lord had made. So I will rejoice. Why? He's already designed the day, and there's purpose in the day. If you believe there's purpose in your life, give him praise. For some of you, just a little alignment would change everything. Because you're busy, but you're not aligned with God's purpose. You're functioning, but you're not aligned with God's priorities for your life. You're not walking out what God has declared about you. And it may even be good, but you know, some things are good things, but they're not God things. I don't want to miss the God things in my life because I was busy doing good things. I want what God is saying about me, my relationships, my purpose in the earth, my, my family. When I begin to align with God's priorities and his kingdom begins to arrive, heaven comes with it. But then he says, not only can you align with God's kingdom, you can ask for God's provision. See, sometimes we get it out of balance, though. We ask for provision before aligning with the kingdom priorities that God has for our life. And the Bible says you can pray amiss. You can pray prayers that are not aligned. And when I pray and I ask before I'm aligned with God's kingdom priorities for me, I usually miss the mark of what he desires in my But once I've aligned with his kingdom priorities, now I can ask him for that daily provision. I can say, give us this day our daily bread. Father, you know what I need today to live out the priorities you have established for me. You know what you've aligned me for, so you know what I need. And you are all sufficient. You are all God, all by yourself. So therefore, I'm just asking you to give me today what I need. And I find that when I'm faithful with a little, he gives me the rulership over the much. So there are times that not only does he give me enough for today, he begins to deposit a week in the bank account and a month in the bank account. And he begins to extend the credit line of heaven to me because he finds out I'm a good steward of what he has given and I begin to ask him and I begin to watch this provision unfold but then also he tells me in this model prayer he said I can secure God's pardon I can secure God's pardon he said when you pray he said you need to ask God to forgive us of our debts as we have also forgiven our debtors the first part of this is easy because we all know that we need to ask God to forgive us if we're going to walk and live a life as a believer. But he, here's what he says. He said, forgive us our debts also as we have forgiven our debtors. Because there's one thing to be free and there's another thing to live free. And you can be free and not yet live free. You can receive forgiveness but not be willing to give forgiveness. You say, well, pastor, you don't know they hurt me. They wound me. I'm not making light of what anything that has ever been done to you or hurt you, but there is a time in your life, like the psalmist sister Elsa saying, You've got to let it go. <laughs> I'm a girl dad. <laughs> you've got to let it go. You, you've got to release it. So I'm thinking about it, I, 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 I'm pondering it. What if Jesus would have showed up and said, I did not realize how Jack up this place was I did not I mean they're worshiping false gods this king's tried to kill me I mean I, it's it's messed up I'm, I, I'm not sure no he gave freely the Bible says while we were yet sinners Christ died for us while we had no ability to give back he gave to us and he said if you really want to be like Christ and you really want to be free as you have been forgiven forgive others release him stand in the same place as Christ has stood for you and I'll tell you there's nothing like walking in an authority that even if they did not ask you release them even if they do 
do not deserve it, you release them. Even if they do it again, you release them. Even if they do not deserve it, you say, you know what? I'm going to be like Jesus, and I'm going to forgive you because I have been forgiven. I have freely received, so I am going to freely re Here's what he was saying was this. He said, if you really want to make your uh, prayer life effective, take it to a whole nother level. He said, walk at a whole nother realm. He said, extend to grace. Why? Because the Bible says grace pushes back the forces of darkness and there will never be anything that pushes back the forces of darkness in your life like the work of grace. So when you are an agent of grace, what you're doing is walking around like a secret agent. You see darkness, you just push it back. You see darkness, you just push it back. It tries to suffocate you. You just break out and declare he that the Son is set free is free indeed. Come on, give him praise today. Here it is. Then he said, also, I'm going to wrap all this up here in a moment. He said, you need to stay aligned with God's plan. It's one thing to receive his priority, but it's another thing to stay aligned because there's a lot of distractions out there. There's a lot of struggles. We're all human. Here it is. He says, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Bible said that there is... A, an enemy and an adversary moving around like a roaring lion. And he's just waiting to pounce. But if you stay aligned with God's plan and you keep receiving and walking in the redemptive work of Christ, you can pray that you are not led into temptation, but that you are delivered. And you are not being led by the evil one, but you are being led by the Holy Spirit. And the minute you're going left, and he said, no, 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 you need to go right. And the minute he says, wait, because that group is going to a place that is not going to lead you into a place of blessing or provision. Or the minute that God says, take a leap of faith, because without that leap of faith, you will never walk in your destiny. He said, that's where you begin to stay up find yourself aligning over and over again with God's priorities for you. But then you wonder and you say, well, how's this all going to happen? I'm weak. I struggle for you. Here it is right here. A prayer habit can break a sin habit. A prayer habit will cause you to speak in a different language. A prayer habit will cause you to rise up in strength when you are weak in your flesh. A prayer habit will cause you to believe that the steps of God are ordered. So I'm going to take it by faith. The, the prayer habit of your life will help you hear a voice that is not the voices around you but a voice from another realm and that prayer life and that prayer habit will cause me to walk in places I would not walk on my own but you say pastor that's all well and good but how can I worship and declare and bless a God that I've never met how can I trust him to be my father when the view of my earthly father may not even be good how can I do that it's by faith how can I walk in a realm believing that his kingdom priority is going to be established in my life? How can I receive forgiveness and forgive others? How can I walk in a place being led by the Spirit and flee temptation? How can I believe that everything I need every day is going to be provided? I'm glad you asked. And Jesus said, in the prayer this way, because none of this stuff you can do on your own, but when you end with this declaration, it all works together. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. I can never touch you without your kingdom power in my life. I would never be able to flee temptation without your glory at work in me. I would never be able to release others without the work of divinity and the grace of the kingdom working in my life. I would never be able to trust you for what I do not have in my hand. But thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory and then he said when you're done put a big amen on it a so be it declare it is done it is done it is done I'm believing over this next 21 days we're going to see some things done we're going to walk in some new places we're going to grab hold of the promise of heaven come on jump to your feet this afternoon put your hands together and give him thanks that he has a kingdom that has no end Power beyond description.
Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 says this. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age. Say this age. Right now there are principalities warring against your assignment. Against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. But I've also been told that I'm a mighty weapon in God. The book of Daniel is, a, I believe, a handbook for spiritual warfare. The whole book of Daniel just butts up nicely against the book of Revelation. And it unlocks promises and provisions and gives us tools that we can do battle with. The whole, the whole chapter. In the very beginning of the chapter, we see three young boys that decided they would not bow to the darkness of the day. But they would fight the good fight of faith. Any Sunday school kids? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And the Bible says that they were thrown into a fire that was seven times hotter than it had ever been. The Bible said the fire was so hot that when they were thrown in, those that threw them in died because of the flames. Sometimes a fire gets hot enough to burn up your adversary around you, but you come through. The Bible said the ropes burned off, but they came out not even smelling like smoke. The Bible said in the midst of the flames, they encountered the fourth man that was likened unto the Son of God. They found Jesus in the midst of the fire. We find it wasn't long. God himself just writes on a wall. We find that Daniel, the Bible says, because he had a spirit of excellence in a foreign land, he found favor in the sight of the king and was promoted over the king's men. But in Daniel chapter 10, after surviving a hungry group of vegetarian lions. God knows what lion pit to put you in. Comes out, they're like, Daniel, you have a salad? He comes out the other side. But in Daniel chapter 10, now at a place of authority, an ambassador for the king, the Bible said that Daniel began to see some things and he was very disturbed at what he was seeing, had a vision. And the Bible said he began to pray. And the Bible said that when he began to pray, he realized that he was in a spiritual battle. And for 21 days, he began to fast and he began to pray. He began to fast and he began to pray. Finally, on the 21st day, an angel broke through. And this is what the angel said. He said, Daniel, the minute you prayed, the heavens heard it. The minute you made a declaration, it came up into the heavens. But he said, the prince of the atmosphere has been warring and trying to keep us from giving you the breakthrough. Matter of fact, I've been battling over the last 21 days. And then heaven dispensed Michael, the archangel, and he is battling right now on your behalf. And he said, there is a host of angels warring. And there is a host of, of battles going on that you cannot see. But I want you to understand, the first time you pray, the heavens heard it. It just took us a while to get here because there's a fight going on in the heavenly realm. There's some principalities. There's some set things against you. There's some things warring against your family. There's some things trying to take your assignment out. There's some things trying to silence your victory. But I've got a good word. What God has started, He is going to finish. And the Bible said not only did He give Daniel a word, Daniel was strengthened. I've come to tell someone over this 21 days, we're going to fight through the atmosphere over this next season we're going to battle through the heavens over this next season those assignments of the enemy that he's put on your life and tried to bring into your family we're going to see them cancel because we're going to walk into the we're going to walk into the presence of our father and we're going to trust that everything we need is in his presence and we're going to pray that a kingdom priority and a kingdom agenda is going to be aligned here on earth we're going to pray that what we need for today and for tomorrow and for next week and for the next season is released from the heaven. We're going to walk in redemption. We're not going to be led into evil and we're going to see it all done because it's His power, His kingdom, and His glory that's at work. A kingdom that the enemy cannot stop. What if Daniel would have given up on day one? Because there's sometimes I pray on Sunday and when it doesn't happen on Monday, 
I know it's just me. Pray for me. I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm human. There's times that I've prayed and a week later, it's not. I said, well, I guess that wasn't God. No, there comes a place where you have to draw a line in the stand and you find out what God is saying about you and your family and your assignment and our church and this city. And we make up our mind that we are going to pray. We are going to push. We are going to fight. We are going to battle. And if we have to, we will tell the devil just like Jesus, you are a liar. Get thee behind me. It is written. God's already said. God God has already declared. God has already spoken. God has already showed up, showed out, and ready to move on. Uh, for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Thank you again for joining us for today's broadcast. Our prayers that it ministered to you and it changed your life. If there's anything we can pray with you about or God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, please send us an email at info at citylifechurch.cc. We also want to invite you to be our guest at one of our Sunday or Wednesday worship experiences. You can find our times and locations on our website at citylifechurch.cc. You can also download the City Life app on your smartphones or tablets for more online messages. It was great worshiping with you today, and we'll see you next time.